Good morning, guys, and welcome back to Daybreak here along with me, Robin Conrad, Raj Arya, my co-host, and Dr. Saw. Yes? Yes. So, okay, moving on now. We're talking a little bit, we'll get, get to the specifics now, yeah? We're going to talk about what really happens, not even on a, uh, an atomic level, yep. or rather actually on an atomic level, about stem cell research. Cellular so, level. Cellular level. <laughs> to be more accurate, <laughs> cellular level, cellular that's level. right. Yes, yes, much more organic. So tell me how, uh, how this whole thing was brought about. I know it's been brought about, uh, the whole development happened since 20 years ago or so, and that it's just different, different institutes working, uh, you know, about, uh, working to develop stem cells. But what do you do? How do you use stem cell research in your practice? And what is basically stem cells? Yeah. yeah. Our viewers out there. Yeah, I mean, um, simple thing just to describe about stem cells first. Actually, stem cells are actually our building blocks mm -hmm. for our organs, our human being. Uh, so if you think about an embryo when you have a sperm and an egg, and when that's fertilized and cells start to replicate, you have embryonic stem cells that then differentiate into different tissues from bone, from heart vessels to blood vessels to different joints to right. the brain mm -hmm. and everything. So. So the embryonic stem cells, if you think about it, it's like, it's like a wild child, you know? <laughs> that child can develop into different professionals, right. okay? But the problem is that it's very difficult to control. And if it goes wrong, it goes very wrong. It goes into tumour, cancer, and mm. everything. So, wow. so, so you very know, delicate. people are, are very concerned about embryonic stem cell research. But adult stem cells is different, you know? The stem cells we're using, um, you have bone marrow cells that you can take, you know, um, and that's been around for a long time. If, sure. you, if you see orthopedic surgeons, um, the bone don't heal because of a fracture. They take bone marrow, that's bone right. marrow graft, and put it inside there. But you know, for many years we've been doing that. But while we are doing that as orthopedic surgeons, we don't know. We we thought it's the bone, but it's not. It's actually the cells mm -hmm. that's in the bone yes, marrow. Yes, so it's yes, like yes. bone marrow stem cell. That and that's been around for a long, long time. If you remember. Um, 30 years ago, when the hematologists, the blood specialists that treat blood disorders like leukemia and everything, and, right. and what they do is that they take bone marrow and it's called bone marrow transplant. That's right. Okay, so for example, um, you, you have an individual who has um, 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 bone marrow problem, disease or whatever, uh, leukemia or whatever, and then you can have either take their cells, if not, take a donor cell, which is HLA compatible, harvest the bone marrow cells and transplant into that individual and to help to repopulate the bone marrow cells and cure the disease to a certain extent. All right? But that was 30 years ago. In the last 20 years, because it's difficulty of getting bone marrow cells and everything, um, the hematologists have moved on to do a procedure called peripheral blood stem cells. You know? So yes. they, take, they, they mobilize the stem cells from the marrow by giving injections called GCSF, okay? Uh -huh. And these are the injections that, that mobilize the cells from the marrow, replicate the cells, and then they go into the bloodstream. So once it goes to the bloodstream, you have all these stem cells in the bloodstream. It's like lots of fish in the river. Sure. And then you have a machine, which is what we use for apheresis process. Right. It's like a centrifuge. Centrifuge oh, the yeah, cells yeah, that yeah, you yeah, want, yeah, yeah. and then return the blood cells and the plasma to the body. And that's the process that we do for our cartilage work research. This okay. is how you harvest the okay. stem cell? That's how we do it's a peripheral blood stem cell. But then there are other people who do uh, cultured cells. So mm. for example, there are companies in Malaysia as well, they'll take individual marrow cells and they put it in a petri dish and with various um, growth factors and everything, they will replicate those cells and that is uh, cultured stem cells. Right. Cultured mesenchymal stem cells. And also, um, sometimes they use a, a single donor and give it to other patients. So these are called allogenic cells. That means that the cells is not coming from the individual patient. The cells that we are using is patients' own blood stem cells. Right. Okay. So can you give a description? You're using uh, our... Yes. Your beautiful display. <laughs> this of the knee here, in terms of how you use stem cells with regards yeah. to I mean, regenerating the cartilage. Sure. I mean, this is a, this is a, a model of a, a right knee joint. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's a front view and that's a side view, and you can see that's a kneecap there. Mm. Right? And in all the joints, what you have in the joints is that you have articular cartilage. Okay? Now, articular cartilage, if you look at a leg of lamb, you, you see that white piece of cartilage that's in that right. joint. <laughs> yes. That is the cartilage. If you remove that cartilage, it's down to bone. Okay. All right? 
So in any joint, this is for example a knee joint, what you have is that you have cartilage there on two sides of That's the right. joint. But when this cartilage wears, wears out, out for whatever there reason, either sports injury, trauma or whatever reason yeah. it wears out, patient will have pain because this cartilage, the normal cartilage, has got no pain fibres. Right. And it's got no blood supply as well. So because it hasn't got blood supply, it cannot undergo repair. Yes. If you cut yourself, you bleed and you can right. repair. If you break your bone, the bone will heal because right. basically, where there is blood, themselves. there can be repairs. That's right. right. Yeah. But the cartilage, because it does not have bo uh, blood. blood, it does not repair. So this is a model that shows cartilage damage. There is damage is down to bone. And when you have this, you have pain because when you walk on raw bone, mm. it's painful, it's aching. So it's like the bones are grinding together. That's the, yeah. the friction and all that. That's it's how you have knee pains, joint pains, and all that. It's bone on bone, and, mm. and, and that's why it's painful. You know. Um, so for you know, if if you, if you look at the history of people wanting to regenerate this cartilage and try to make it into normal cartilage, there there are lots of methods of doing it throughout the years. Sure. Okay, but um, what we are doing is something different. Okay. Uh, for many years, a very standard procedure that orthopedic surgeons do is actually doing keyhole surgery called arthroscopic surgery. Okay. Said, you put a camera inside there right. and it's you look amazing. inside yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we do as well. And there's a, there's a technique called microfracture technique which is popularised by Dr. Richard Stateman in Vail, Colorado. And what he does is that he does some picking into the bone with a little mallet and a bone pick and make little holes into the bone. And by doing that, the cells will repair to a certain extent. But then uh, the repair tissue, unfortunately, is not a normal hyaline cartilage. It's actually a fibrocartilage, which is a poor quality cartilage. So if you look at, if you look at your cartilage, it's like your tyres. Mm. You know, you wear your tyres right. and you want to replace it with a good tyre or you want to put it, replace it with a poor quality tyres mm -hmm. that do not last. So microfracture, unfortunately, gives you poor quality cartilage. And for many years, I've been doing drilling instead of microfracture and we've been supplementing it with giving hyaluronic acid injection, HA injections. These are the building block for cartilage sure. but it's got no cells. But I was getting variable results, some good results, some poor results. So seven, eight years back we thought, can we just drill and put stem cells and HA and regenerate good cartilage, you know? And that's when we look at animal model because we wanted a proof of concept. You know, mm. you can't just go ahead and just do human. <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> and so we we, we collaborated. <laughs> we collaborated with uh, UPM a Veterinary Hospital. We did some animal goat model, and we created defects. We used various ways: a control group, a group with HA, a group with stem cells, and and we found that the group with stem cells regenerated very beautiful cartilage. Mm. And at the same time, the Singaporeans did a, a model in a porcine model that they did marrow cells, they cultured, and they also grew beautiful cartilage. Mm. So a different way of approach, but we got the same results. Mm. You know? wow. So from there, we progressed into clinical trials. So we started um, doing keyhole surgery, sure. uh, drilling into the bone, and from there, we injected, harvest the peripheral blood stem cells and inject into the knee joint, and we follow up our patients. So in the last six years, we've done I personally have done about 450 cases now. Wow. And we've, we've followed them up. And we've also taken, you know, second look arthroscopy, uh, opportunistic biopsy, that we take biopsy for a repair cartilage and found out that we can get very beautiful cartilage, which is very much similar to a normal cartilage. But doctor, I'm, I'm really curious though, right? Because, you know, when you do these procedures and operations, there are always risks, yeah. yes? But I want to know what are like the success rates? You know, sure. like the, the, mm -hmm. you have a lot of patients come in and sometimes they work out, sometimes it doesn't work out, you know, this and that. So what is the percentage? Yeah. You know, when, when you look at your results, when you look at doing something new, stick to the principles, you know. I mean, medicine, you have surgical principles and everything. So what we do is that there are lots of things you need to assess before you start doing your surgery. All right. um, you want to decide, it, do you have patients who, who is very bow-legged? It's mm -hmm. like you driving your car, the tyre is not aligned. If mm, you're bow legged, the right. cartilage wears up. If you try to regenerate cartilage in that joint, it's not going to work unless you realign the leg. So it's a complex procedure. You know, if you've got a ligament problem, you need to address that. Sometimes the kneecap don't sit in the middle and you need to address that as well. But if you, if you put all that together and we look at our long-term results, yes, you have good results and you've got not so good results. Um, but the fact that you stick to surgical principles, the drilling procedures, mm -hmm are standard orthopedic procedures, but we've refined that technique, you know, and in publications we've shown that. 
and also stick to cells that you know that has got a long history. So if I start using some cells from animal origin and inject into human joint, you can't do that because you don't know the cell origin. True, you know? true. That, but we are using stem cells that's been around for the last 20 years. And the peripheral blood stem cells has been transplanted from individuals to another patient who needs that. And that process through a blood transfusion has been around for a long time. So we use cells that we know. But yes, there's still potential problems. And that's why we are looking at our long-term results now. We are looking at our phase 4 results now where we are taking our patients back three, four, five, six years, we're doing an MRI scan for them and look at is there any synovial tumour, any abnormal bone tumours that form from all this. Right. You know, so, so yeah, but any, as I said before, frontiers of medicine, you have to push the boundary. Right. But then you have to be cautiously right. optimistic as well. All right. Dr. So, speaking of uh, pushing the boundaries, uh, with regards to Kuala Lumpur Sports Medicine Centre, what's in the pipeline right now going forward into, into the future? I understand that you're also <laughs> positioning it as part of attracting uh, um, patients from overseas as well, very quickly, just yeah, to sum it up. Very quickly. I mean, um, we have, because of the niche work that we do, we have a lot of patients coming from abroad yeah. just for this treatment, okay? And the Malaysian government is very keen to look at this technology and support the technology and to make this available worldwide and share knowledge with our American colleagues and mm. our British colleagues. Um, so by doing that, you know, the Malaysian government realize that this is where it's good for niche practice, good for health tourism, good for biotechnology of Malaysia. Yes. So, so the government is fully aware of what we're doing and fully supportive of what we're doing. That is fantastic. And it's very keen to see how they can support a worldwide trial wow. funded by Malaysian government. Well, so that that's in the process of discussion at the moment. Yeah, fantastic. And it's all in the backyards of Malaysia itself. So for those of you who are suffering from sports injuries, as what we've been discussing right now, all you need to do is to pop over to the Kuala Lumpur Sports Medicine Centre, which is in Damansara Heights, right? That's right. That's right. Just a stone's throw from here. So you can have yourself checked out by Dr. Saw or one of his colleagues. And who knows, you could be almost as good as new. Now, of course, if you have any okay. more questions, you can still email us at updates at capitaltv.my or tweet us at the Capital TV. And we'll be more than happy to forward your query to Dr. Saw. All right, that's all the time. We have her for this particular segment. Dr. Saw, thank you very much you very for being much. on our show. It has been most Robin, informative. And right after the break, we're going to talk about a special event which is just taking place earlier this week, which is called Culinary Malaysia 2013. So stick around to find out more right after this break.